Good morning, everyone. It's good to see everyone here today. Uh, if you would, just be making your way on in. It's almost time for our service to start. Before we have the call to worship this morning, uh, Tim Gatz uh, has some things that he wants to share with us and some young people who have been working really hard uh, that he wants you to see and to hear about. Tim. So, um, we've prepared a, a brief video of the children talking about the program, and then I'll speak for a minute. Well, basically being able to go there um, and do some activities. I like seeing the other people and churches perform and what stuff they did. I went to the Aubrey Lund Hotel and I liked it because it had a jungle there. It was when I got to do my speaking part with Parker, my friend. And I got a medal for doing my puppet competition with my friends. My favorite part of Lads to Leaders was winning the first place medal for puppets. My favorite thing about Lads to Leaders is that we is that we earn medals. Um, so it was probably that you can like challenge yourself into doing stuff like putting your hand up for puppets is working your arm and preaching in front of all the people is uh working your mouth muscles and also getting you less scared of big crowds it was really cool to go on stays breakfast <laughs> My favorite part of Lads to Leaders is doing is doing art and reading the Bible. My favorite part of Lads to Leaders that was not in the convention was reading the Bible to everybody upstairs. That I kind of like feel like something in it. Like I I play my part. If I lose my part, then it's gonna be more complicated for others. My favorite part of year-round events is getting to work on Good Samaritan. My favorite thing about Latin leaders is, 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 is making cards for our own people. The thing I'm looking forward to most next year is song leading. Song leading. I want to go back to the Aubrey Lund Hotel and win the model medal. And I hope I go to the Aubrey Lund Hotel. Doing other stuff and lots of later, like Bible reading. What I'm looking for most for next year is doing puppets. Puppets, art, and uh, reading now and sketching. Definitely puppets because it's the best. Come up front, guys. So I'm going to give a brief, just a brief summary of what, uh, this is some of the kids that participated, um, there's others that aren't here, brief uh, summary of what we've done over the last year, uh, six boys practiced oral Bible reading, uh, four boys practiced song leading, we had one boy do a speech, 
11 children did artwork of some kind, drawing or painting. Um, we had six youth participate in Bible Bowl. Uh, 13 children did puppets. Two children did know the books, which is uh, reciting from memory all the books of the Bible. Um, three children did read the word, which is uh, either reading or listening through the Bible in under a year. And then we had 21 youth at different times participate in Good Samaritan. Uh, and a few examples of things we did. Uh, there was some service work that they did for the children's program, uh, sack the pulpit. If you were here around Thanksgiving, we gave away, um, we did that with the children's program, uh, gave away meals to people at Thanksgiving. Uh, they've made homemade cards and gift bags uh, for the sick and some of our shut-ins. And they've done some visiting and singing at nursing homes. And here in a while, I'll tell you a little more about the program. Thank you. We're really proud of all these young people and what they have done. Uh, and we're so thankful to those who worked who didn't get introduced. So all of you adults that worked with this program, please stand up and be recognized. Come on, don't be bashful. All right. Paul, in writing to the Ephesian church, had these words to say. I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through the Spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And, and the psalmist in Psalm 63 with some of these same thoughts, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. And we are here to do that this day because we have seen his loving kindness. We have benefited from his loving kindness. We have benefited from the salvation that comes through Christ Jesus our Lord who loves us. Let's stand as we sing. Jesus loves the living. Jesus love. 
us pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we humbly approach your throne, and we thank you that we can call you Father. Thank you that you sent Jesus to this earth to live among men, to live a perfect life, and to die on the cruel cross, to pay the price for our sins, that we can be reconciled to you, and that we can be your children. Thank you, Father, for this first day of the week, a time that we assemble to worship you. Lord, we pray your blessings upon each and every person that's here today. Lord, we're mindful of those that can't be with us today, and Lord, we pray that you would be with them. We pray for those, Father, who are watching online. Lord, may the things that we say and do here today be pleasing in your sight. Lord, we pray that if we err in any way that you would correct us, and may we do better in the future. Lord, we thank you that we can come together here in freedom. Lord, we thank you for the freedoms that we have in this country. We pray that other peoples of the world will have the same freedom. Lord, we pray for the leadership of this church, the elders. Be with them as they guide us and they direct us. May they make good decisions on our behalf. And Lord, we pray that you'd be with the elder selection process. Be with those who are being considered. And Lord, may those be chosen that you would have to serve. Lord, we also pray not only for the elders, but the deacons and the teachers and ministry leaders, Lord, all who are involved with serving this congregation. And Lord, may we all do our part to help grow your kingdom both here and abroad. And Lord, we pray for our missionaries. Lord, may they speak to folks who have open minds and open hearts. Lord, keep them safe as they try to spread the gospel around the world. Lord, we pray that you would be with Travis as he brings a message from your word here today. Lord, may he speak the truth and maybe be attentive to what he says. And Lord, may we live our lives in a way that honors you. And may we, when we leave this place, may we live our lives in a way that folks will see good in us and, and want to be like us and, and become Christians. Forgive us, Lord, when we fall short of your expectations. We thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. To prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, let's sing this song. Why did my Savior come to earth and to
Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, our communion cups are in the back, or and if you don't have one already, uh, please raise your hand and somebody will bring you one. My grandparents came to know the Lord much later in life than most. However, in their lifetime, a more hospitable and humble pairing I will scarcely find. My earthly father was baptized as a teenager, but fell away. However, many who followed his example stuck with the path. Still, my father embraced Christian values. I myself was baptized at the age of 12 and have stayed the path. The foremost mile marker along a Christian life path remains the Lord's Supper. Take and eat, this is my body. Will you bow? Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you thanking you so much for sending your Son and his body being here in the flesh, mortal as we are, walking a life path that was emblematic of the life path that all shall follow, should follow. And dear God, for that beautiful life that to then be nailed to a cross, it's hard to imagine. But we know that it was all part of a greater plan and that it is a beautiful part of what reconciles us and brings us together as one body. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Brother Mike Anglin was the minister who baptized me. He was an orphan who was adopted. His adopted mother was a Christian, and as a result, Mike followed in her footsteps. He preached the gospel for over 50 years. Later in life, he, along with his wife Ruth, were both stricken with Alzheimer's and hospitalized. Yet when they would ask him in activities about things he was thankful for, memory exercises, he would proclaim his love for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Think about it. He could scarcely remember anything about himself or that he was married to the woman he saw and flirted with every day. But he still remembered the Lord the blood is the life. Let us bow. Dear God, thank you so much for the lamb that was slain and the blood that was shed in atonement for all of our sins, for the sins of this world. Dear God, Help us never to forget this. Help us to keep it at the forefront of our minds and of our lives. And thank you so much for this institution so that we won't forget as mere mortals sometimes do, but that we'll always remember you until the end and in the new beginning when we live in heaven with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
It's been just about a year since I moved to this area and began attending this congregation. As I regularly come back each week, study in class, and walk the halls, sometimes as security, interacting with all of you, I am filled with a feeling I like to describe as that. Y'all come back now, you hear? Feeling. <laughs> That's the feeling we should all have about the church, Christ's bride. That's the feeling our mission is calling us to bring unto the world, that all would come to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and be saved. Last Thursday, I attended the National Day of Prayer in Townsend. It was awe-inspiring to see so many gathering together for an hour in the middle of the week to pray to God on behalf of people, our nation, and our world. The mission is go. Our offering, be it monetarily or in giving of our time, is the fuel that will help others come to know him as we do. If you need to make a contribution, we have the online giving. We also have a box in the back where you can um, place it. And there's always your time. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for freedom to worship you, to proclaim you out loud that you are our Lord and Savior. So many don't have this freedom, dear Heavenly Father, and we, is our wish, as it is your wish, that all would have the freedom, that all would come to know you that if given the choice between so many other things, so many other distractions, that they would make serving you, make remembering you, make being more and more Christ-like in their own personal lives, their mission, and that all would be saved on that, in those end days or end times. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen.
I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, we were all given one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not be for that reason to stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not be for that reason to stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If, and if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. And I cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts that we think are less honorable we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While we are presentable, parts need no special treatment, but while God has placed the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so there should be no division of, in the body but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. Now if one part suffers, every part suffers with it, and if one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are part of the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And now God has placed the church, first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles and gifts of healing, and helping of guidance and teachers. Do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret. Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Lads to Leaders, uh, what it is, why we do it, and some of our plans for the upcoming year. Um, if you're worried, Travis will be speaking this morning, so you will still get to hear him. Um, Lads to Leaders is a leadership training program for children and youth, preschool through high school. Uh, there's a few events that allow for adult participation also, but more on that later. Um, the photo that you see is uh, most of our group who attended the convention at the Opryland Hotel on Easter weekend. Um, there were a few others who attended but were not there the night that we took the picture, and there were also a few others that participated but didn't attend convention, um, which is one of the things I want to stress is that you don't have to attend convention to be a part of this program. Um, let's see if this works. Hey, it does. So why do we do Lads to Leaders? Uh, is it for the competition, or the awards, or the trip to Nashville, uh, or to eat meals, uh, specifically breakfast, <laughs> prepared by Tom and Angie? Um, as you heard earlier in the video that we showed, uh, those are some of the reasons that the kids mentioned, uh, that they like to participate in Lads to Leaders. They're the reasons that the kids get excited to participate and the reasons why they put in the effort that they do for their events. Um, these two pictures here are youth uh, receiving recognition for things that they did throughout the year in what's considered non-competitive events where you get recognized just for completing certain goals. Uh, it doesn't matter how you did compared to everyone else. If you completed the goals, you get recognized. Um, the bottom picture is from a competitive event, and the way the awards work is they call the final, the, the top so many teams on stage 
And this is the moment when they realized that their name hadn't been called yet in first place was the only award that hadn't been given out. <laughs> so it was uh, very exciting for them to, to find that out. Uh, but like I said, this isn't why we do Lads the Leaders. It's not why the adults volunteer to coach the events, and it's not why the church supports the program. Uh, we do it because we need to train our youth to be leaders of the church tomorrow. Uh, we see the need to play the long game, as they say, uh, when it comes to the church and how the church interacts with the world. In Proverbs 13, it says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. As great as a financial inheritance is, how much better would it be if we leave an inheritance of a strong church to our grandchildren? And I say this as someone who doesn't even have grandchildren yet. We are shown throughout the Bible that, that God has always played the long game and sees needs long before they occur. In Genesis 3, he said to the serpent, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Uh, and th this was in reference to the seed of woman Jesus and how he would someday defeat sin. This was right after the fall of Eden, and God is already declaring his plan for redemption. In fact, in First Peter, we learn that the plan goes back even before the fall, where it says, He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. For us, part of the long game is raising up leadership for the future. The church will need great elders, deacons, ministers, Bible teachers, and song leaders, even after our current leaders are gone from this world. There will also be a need for Christian family leaders and community leaders to expand the kingdom. When we see young boys being rambunctious and wrestling, do we think, I wish they weren't here in our way, or do we think if we could get them to harness that spirit in a positive way, they could make great elders or ministers someday? At the end of convention on Sunday morning, there's a Sunday morning service for everyone who's still in attendance at, at the hotel. And the service is run by high school students that participate in the Lads to Leaders program. Um, they give, they, they speak and they lead the songs with thousands of people in attendance. Um, more than I've ever spoken in front of, more than I've ever led a song in front of. And it's awe-inspiring awe and a sign of what we can expect for the future church. In the coming year, we have many goals to expand the reach of our program here. Uh, one is to bring back Bible reading during Sunday morning services, like Evan did today. This will be open to any boys through high school who would like to read scripture related to the sermon on Sunday mornings, whether you do other Lads to Leaders events or not. Um, if you'd like to do that, talk to either Travis or myself, and Travis will be choosing after this week what that scripture will be to go along with his sermon. Another goal is to get more young men leading singing on Sundays, either in the morning or the evenings, depending on comfort level. I know when I started leading singing, Herb started us out in Sunday evenings where the crowd's much smaller and a little less intimidating. Um, Bucky is willing to work with any boys or young men who would like to learn how to lead singing. Again, this is whether you do other Lads to Leaders events or not, so it's not, not exclusive to people who want to say they're in Lads to Leaders. We also want to incorporate puppets into children's worship or, or other children's programs if we can uh, to give our puppeteers a chance to put their skills to work teaching the younger children. Um, this picture is actually from a week or two before convention. Um, they were practicing, but at the same time, the three and four year old class got to enjoy the, the puppet show and learn from the puppet show. And this is my favorite puppet performance of the year, honestly, is when they do it for the small children downstairs. Um, we also want to expand the Good Samaritan program to help more people. Uh, if you know someone who could use some homemade cards or a visit or a gift, gift bag, either talk to Liz, my wife, or Emily Parker. And we're also opening, open to hearing other ways that we could serve 
um, our members or our congregation or our community. Uh, we also plan to have a class for older children or youth on the Book of Romans, which is the book that next year's Bible Bowl will be based on. And we also hope to add more events to include more ways to participate and learn. Uh, so I'm going to go through some of the events. Um, if you see one that's got a star next to it, that means we do not currently have anyone participating. Uh, but we'd like to try to get some of these started if we can, if we get um, youth interest and also adult help to, to lead those groups. Uh, Bible reading and song leading are two events that I mentioned already earlier. Uh, Regina teaches and, and instructs on how to read aloud to groups. Uh, Bucky teaches song leading techniques. Um, Regina is also willing to, to teach public speaking to anyone who'd like to give a speech. Uh, Bible Bowl is a competition based on specific book or books of the Bible. This year's book will be Romans. I mentioned that before. Um, the past year, it was led by Casey and Lauren, and they taught Ezra and Nehemiah. And um, so those kids probably know more about Ezra and Nehemiah than most of us do now, because that's not one that we study very often. Um, there's both an individual test that occurs before convention and a team competition that takes place at convention. Pearls is another Bible study, but it's more topical based, and it's around the theme. Uh, this year's theme will be based on Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. And the Pearl study this year is called Not Ashamed to Lead. It is, it's a 13, it might even be 14 this year course uh, study. And then there's a, a test for that also for those that would like to compete. But Bible Bowl and Pearls is open to anyone whether you want to compete in the test or on the team or not. Uh, so if you'd just like any youth that would just like to study the Book of Romans or the course Not Ashamed to Lead could participate. Art and puppets are two events that show the kids that they can share the gospel using talents that many of us don't typically associate with sharing the gospel. Uh, Kirsty teaches art, and Dina, Ramira, and Jason teach puppets. Uh, art can be submitted into the competition, whether you attend convention or not. Uh, puppets only requires attendance at the convention if you want to be part of the team, like the one I showed earlier. One of the benefits of puppets is that it draws kids into the program, though. I, I don't know if you heard Lily mention that she did, she did puppets this year. It was the only event she did. But what she's looking forward to most is doing other events, and she specifically mentioned Bible reading. So the, the puppets, it, it's a great program, a great way to teach the younger children, give them the opportunity to do that, but also a way to encourage them to get into the other events. Second language is learning how to say phrases like Jesus loves me or do you need help or reciting various Bible verses in another language uh, and that includes American Sign Language. This would be a good way to make connections uh, with deaf members of our congregation. Um, if you don't know we do have some deaf members here um, but right now if I wanted if I wanted to tell you that the congregation loves you I would have to have Laura or Herb or someone else say that for me. So that would be a way that we could learn that language to communicate with more of our members. We also have a lot of work going on in Albania, so that would be a way that you could potentially connect to members of the congregation there. Um, or if you want to do a mission trip to a place where English is not primarily spoken. And also, um, if you've noticed, we have a significant population in this area, in Blount County and some of the surrounding counties that primarily speak Spanish. Um, so in order to reach people that don't speak English, you need to learn their language. And then providers and keepers are practical skills um, to teach youth to be husbands and fathers, that's providers, or to be wives and mothers, that's keepers. Um, a few examples of the kids that, uh, the skills that could be taught are money management, child discipline, sewing, food preservation, plumbing, and car maintenance. Um, 
there's 15 skills for keepers and 13 for providers, and they do allow for the option. Uh, if you're a boy, you can do list uh, things from the the keepers list, and if you're a girl, you can do a few from the the providers list. Uh, know the books is for children to memorize the books of the Bible, and as they get older, uh, the event adds more difficulty to know the themes of the books of the Bible, so that if you're looking for a specific topic, you know which books talk about what things. Um, debate is open to those in grade seven and above, um, and it's a chance to debate a topic from a biblical perspective. Uh, it requires that the students argue, um, study arguments on both sides of the issue, and also rebuttals for each uh, using the Bible. Uh, this coming year's debate topic will be the use of instrumental music in worship service. Um, sower, headed to the office, gifts, and guard are all classes for older kids, grades 6 through 12. Uh, sower is an evangelism training class that emphasizes personal evangelism. So it's not preacher training, but rather lessons in why we need to reach the lost and ways that we can do that in our lives. Um, the class ends with students either individually or in small groups from the class reaching out to at least one individual who does not know Christ and putting the class lessons into practice. Headed to the office is a leadership training for boys to become leaders in the church. It is intended to be taught by one or more elder um, and the Lads to Leaders organization also encourages opening the class up to adult men who would like similar training from the elders. Um, I haven't discussed it with them, but I'm sure I could get a few of them on board to teach that. And I think I would personally like to do a class like that with some of our elders. Gifts and guard are classes. Uh, gifts is for teen girls to be led by a woman, and guard is for teen boys to be led by a man, and the emphasis of both events is to develop a spiritual relationship and dependence on one another for strength to overcome temptation and serve faithfully within their all-female or all-male groups. It's a good opportunity to get practice early in life, uh, learning from older women and men, uh, as it says in Titus 2, that the older women admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Uh, this is an opportunity to learn how to accept teaching from older women and men as they become young adults, and later training for them to be the older women and men who exhort the young women and men. Um, those last few events are specifically 6th through 12th grade. Um, we are not trying to replace the youth group. That is never our goal. Um, so if the youth group is doing some of these things, uh, we'd, we'd gladly join in with that. If they're not, we would gladly add on to that at a time that works for everyone that doesn't interfere with the current youth events. Uh, good Samaritan is a way to practice good works toward others. Uh, the participants can be recognized for what they have done for others throughout the year. Uh, some of the ways we do that is making cards for those who are sick, or as my daughter said in the video, old people making gift bags for some of our shut-ins, uh, visiting the nursing home, and doing service projects at the church building. Uh, as James 1.27 says, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Like I said earlier, uh, if there's ways that Good Samaritan participants can help out others, uh, we're open to new suggestions there. Uh, Centurion of Scripture is an event where participants are recognized for memorizing 100 Bible verses in a year um, from any standard non-paraphrase translation. Um, it's called Centurion of Scripture because the Centurion, as uh, mentioned in the Bible, is the leader over 100 
in, in those days. Um, and read the word is recognition for either reading or listening through the Old Testament, the New Testament, or the entire Bible within a year. Uh, these are both good ways to learn and know better what the Bible says and teaches us. If you would like to participate in any of these events or help lead these events, let me know. Uh, we currently meet Sunday evenings during service with different events rotating each week. Uh, tonight there will be a Good Samaritan event uh, for any kids that would like to attend. Again, whether you've done Lads to Leaders before or not. Um, and parents would be free to join the celebration for our graduating seniors. Um, which I would like to encourage everyone to attend because it's a good way to support our youth and it's always fun to hear Bert's stories about the youth. Um, and we're open, like I said earlier, we're open to adding other times for specific events if needed uh, to open them up to more participants, uh, especially the older group because we don't want to interfere with our current youth programs. So our primary goal with Lads to Leaders is to teach youth and children what their gifts are and how they can use those gifts to serve and lead in the church. We also set out to lead them to live out the qualities that Paul told Timothy and Titus to seek out when selecting elders. Blameless, temperate, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not greedy for money, sober-minded, a lover of what is good, just, holy, self-controlled, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. As Travis said in the sermon a few weeks ago when he was talking about our elder selection process, these are qualities that we should all strive to increase as we mature, mature as Christians, not just for our elders. Uh, I'm going to end with a challenge, which means if Travis has a challenge today, you'll get two challenges today. Um, I included this picture on the challenge slide. Uh, these are the two that were selected to carry our congregation's banner in what what is called the Parade of Leaders on Friday night at convention. Um, the last two events that were on the previous slide, Centurion of Scripture and Read the Word, that's the memorization and reading through the Bible, are also open to adults. I'd like to challenge all of the adults of our congregation to try to either memorize 100 Bible verses or read or listen through the Bible in the coming year. Um, share with me. If, if you've completed these, and I'll keep a list that can be used to encourage, I'm sorry, encourage our young people that participate in the program and show them that reading and knowing the Bible is something that they continue to do throughout their lives, even as adults. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, and. Uh, Having gone to Lads to Leaders this year for my first time ever, it was a fantastic uh, experience. The, uh, there was one night we were, we were at the Opryland Hotel, in case you didn't hear that on the video, and, uh, which is a really cool place. It was also my first time to be there. But uh, there, were, there were over 9,000 Christians who were involved in, this, in the Nashville area, and they have it uh, at churches you know, all throughout the country and uh, in different, uh, different uh, venues. But there was one night after the events had finished, uh, the boys were going down to bed and I was gonna go walk around and look for some ice cream. And uh, as I was exploring, uh, I heard this heavenly music in the sky coming from somewhere and I couldn't find where it was coming from. And uh, I was walking around and if you haven't been there, they have these huge like atriums just full of uh, trees and all that stuff and they're massive. And I looked over and I saw thousands of Christians on the other side of one gathered together late one night singing songs. And it was fantastic. I mean, you could really hear it like echoing throughout wherever you were, even when you couldn't see them. And then I was able to go find where they were. And it was just a tremendous experience. And, uh, and so for community, for worship and all of that, it's a wonderful thing. In fact, I love the idea of a church putting forth effort into the building up of their youth. Uh, that is an essential kingdom work. And I know for me, uh, the direction my life has taken, uh, being a preacher and all that, that is the result of me being young and being given opportunities to help with the church and receiving a lot of encouragement from the church as I did it. Uh, I didn't have like a burning bush experience or anything like that, but I did have loving Christians who gave me the chance to uh, teach and even to preach and uh, people who encouraged me as I did so. And I came to see that that was uh, a calling in my life. And I think that that's a calling we can offer to our young people as well. 
Jesus, uh, in Mark chapter 9, in verse 36 and 37, after gathering with his disciples, he takes a child. He actually brings a child with him, and he set him before them all, and taking him in his arms, which is a picture that I love uh, of Jesus holding a child, and it says, whoever receives one child like this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me does not receive me, but him who sent me. That's quite a thing to say. It's like receiving a child is receiving Jesus, and receiving Jesus is receiving God. Jesus likens himself here to a child. If you want to grow closer to Jesus, grow closer to children's ministry. Grow closer to the reception and service of children. And that's one way that you will grow in your walk with Jesus. That's an incredible thing for him to say, to liken himself to, if you receive a child like this, that's how you receive me. He goes on in uh, Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Uh, If you've ever noticed in the Gospels, Jesus' disciples don't always listen that well to him. Uh, He just told them this about children. And then in the next chapter, it says, And they, uh, like people and the crowds and the parents, they were bringing children to Jesus so that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. (laughs) So the disciples were like, get them out of here. We don't have time for children. We have important kingdom things to do. And that's the mindset that Jesus is going to correct. To think, we don't have time for children, we have kingdom stuff to do. Jesus is going to say, you vastly misunderstand what the kingdom is all about if you think that spending time with children isn't kingdom work. Uh, Jesus, in verse 14, he says, but when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. Uh, This is one of those things, if you want to get Jesus a little bit upset, uh, tell the children to go away and go do something else. Uh, Jesus becomes indignant and says, Permit the children to come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. The kingdom of God belongs to them. That is also a striking statement. It's one that we might not take uh, as seriously as perhaps we should. Verse 15, Jesus says, Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. So think about that. How often do we tell children, we want you to grow up and be like this good, godly man? What Jesus does is he kind of reverses that. And he thinks, you adults, I want you to grow up to be like these children. Uh, I want you to receive receive the kingdom as a child does. And it's one of the many times that Jesus does the reversal of the norms to illustrate what his kingdom is all about. But children become our examples in the kingdom of heaven. In verse 16, It says, and he took them in his arms, and he began blessing them, laying his hands on them. I love the idea that the children are the church of tomorrow, and so we need to invest time in them if we care about the church tomorrow. That's true. I understand how age works and all of that stuff. But it's also true, and maybe even more true, instead of simply thinking them as the church of tomorrow, they are the kingdom of right now, and they matter right now. And their service to the kingdom is just as essential and important as anyone else's in this building. Yours, mine, anyone. What we do with the kids matters. When I think of the Maryville Church of Christ and I think about the ministries that excite me, the ministries where I think we're doing good, vital kingdom work, I think a lot about the time and the effort we put into our children. I love the Soul Train program. Uh, Jessica Hazel does a phenomenal job teaching our kids and, and all of the, the people who help with that. There's so many who are uh, you know, conductors bringing the kids different places and teachers and people who help with the classrooms and all of that. That's a team-wide effort, uh, and it's something that is legitimate, real kingdom work. It's just as important as anything else we do in this church, perhaps more so. Jesus specifically mentions kingdom efforts for the children. I think our TNT programs and our children worship programs are fantastic in instructing and in teaching our children what worship and life in the kingdom is all about. I love our, I, you know, when you, when you boil down some of our biggest ministries, I love how many of them focus around and revolve around children. I love that we have a preschool here, the Stepping Stones Preschool, and Christy Bird and uh, Jessica Tipton do a fantastic job, and all of the teachers that, that are a part of that are doing eternal kingdom work by teaching and welcoming the children into those classrooms. Um, we, you know, I have two small children, so maybe that's extra special to me, but, uh, but they've both gone through that preschool, 
and they have loved their teachers. They have learned a lot. It has prepared them for education. It's prepared them for life. They've grown spiritually in that time there. And I love that that's a work that this church uh, is supportive of. I think Lads to Leaders is a fantastic program in giving children the opportunity not just to learn, which is essential, but also to lead, which is crucial. Uh, we are giving them encouragement and opportunity, and I think that's a, a wonderful thing for this church to do. I love uh, the effort Bert puts in to the youth ministry and working with uh, the, the children who are a little bit older, uh, some of our teens and, and middle school and high school age. In fact, tonight, and I'm going to throw a plug in here, um, tonight we are honoring our seniors who are graduating from high school. So pretty much all day today, we're focusing on the youngest to the oldest of our youth and of our children. And I want to encourage everyone here, uh, if you can, come to that. That's an awesome accomplishment. They're graduating high school, a new avenue and a new door is opening up into the future of their lives. And encourage them in that. Let them know that they have a church family who loves them. And wherever they go from here and whatever they do, they have a family who loves them and will always love them. And they need to know that. It's important for people to know that they're not alone in this world, and one of the great ways to show that is from the youngest age you can, let these children know that when you're here, you matter. When you're here, you are valued. When you are here, the kingdom belongs to you, and we are here to, to help you in that in any way that we can. So try to come and support that. Uh, I am going to end with a couple of, uh, with a couple of challenges. Uh, just as we have a Sunday that focuses on our youth, a Sunday that focuses on the ministries that we're involved in for our youth and, and what we can do for them, I want to encourage you, don't ever put anything in between our children and Jesus or our children and their walk with God. You know, that's what the disciples are essentially doing when they're trying to keep the children from going to Jesus. Now, I don't think anyone would ever say, no, children, don't go to Jesus. That, we, we recognize that that's a wrong-headed move on their part. However, we can inadvertently not directly stand in front of the children and say no, but we can add a lot of things that they have to overcome and bypass and leap over. We can put obstacles between them and Jesus. Whenever we prioritize other things in our life above uh, our service to the church and above our service to one another and above our service to Christ, we can find ourselves accidentally uh, putting obstacles in between them and their walk with God. Let's look into our lives and look into our actions and make sure that we are making the path to Jesus as smooth and clear and easy as humanly possible uh, for the children growing up in this church. Number two, I would say to every one of us here, get involved in this essential kingdom work. We might not all be involved in the exact same way. We might not all have the same gifts and talents and skills, but seek ways that you can get involved in the kingdom work of our youth. Um, whether it's with Lads to Leaders, there are a ton of opportunities uh, for everyone to get involved in Lads to Leaders and in training and supporting, whether it's making meals for the people who are going there, whether it is helping to teach, whether it is getting involved yourself and doing the Good Samaritan works or reading through the Bible in a year or memorizing verses from scripture just to show your support for the work. Get involved in it to where that's a ministry that you can be a part of. I love the idea of an every member ministry. You know, something where every person is engaged as a minister in this church. And we want to provide all kinds of opportunities for people to get involved. Lads to Leaders is one. But so is Soul Train. Uh, talk to Jessica. I know if you go up to Jessica and say, hey, I want to get more involved and I want to help. How can I help? She won't be dumbfounded. Uh, she, she won't think I can't come up with anything for you to do. I bet she can come up with something that would be useful to, uh, to, to what she is doing uh, and to what the church here is doing. I bet um, stepping stones. I bet Bert, if you say, hey, what can I do that would help out the youth? Uh, I bet he can come up with something, and I bet it'll be meaningful and beneficial. So seek ways to get involved in helping with the youth. Uh, they matter. They matter an awful lot. Um, and then finally, and this is uh, perhaps a, uh, uh, this is one that every one of us can do as well. Um, but seriously, pray for what we do with our youth. Uh, pray for our youth. Pray for our graduates. Pray for lads to leaders. Pray for soul train. Pray for the, the, the preschool. Pray for uh, Bert's ministry. Pray for a lot of what we do in order to build up, encourage, and strengthen our youth because they matter. 
They matter for the future, and they matter right now. And so let's make sure they're a priority in this church and in our lives. And if we can help uh, anyone here uh, become a part of the kingdom, if we can help anyone here uh, give your loyalty and your love to Jesus, please let that be known. You can name him as the Lord of your life, have your sins washed away in baptism, and begin life anew with Jesus as your Lord. If you want to talk to some of our elders, we'll have some in the library in the back, or you can come and sit on the front row while we stand and as we sing. like to, to remind you to look at the list of those who are sick uh, in our bulletin, those who are struggling with terminal diseases, uh, and to include all of those on your prayer list. 
we have one for you to add. Uh, Margaret Anderson called last night. Uh, she has a sister, Geraldine. Some of you may not know. She grew up in this congregation, uh, lives in Middle Tennessee, and she and uh, her husband uh, have lost their son, uh, Paul Allen Norman. Uh, he and I succumbed to cancer yesterday. Uh, the family requests your prayers on their behalf. Uh, and we'll give the announcements uh, about uh, funeral arrangements uh, a little bit later uh, when we have them. Let's go to the Father. Father, we're so very thankful that you are a God of love and compassion and mercy and long-suffering. We're thankful, Father, that your loving kindness is extended to us. We love you and we thank you. And we thank you for your love that made a way for us to be reconciled to you and to be redeemed. And that through your son, Jesus, who died on Calvary for us. Father, thank you for that beautiful picture you've given us in the inspired word of Jesus, taking the children to him and loving them and reminding us that we too need to do the same. Father, we're so thankful for the children in this congregation. We're so thankful today, especially for those who have made the efforts uh, to improve themselves, and we pray that you will be with them and that you will bless them, help their efforts to grow as they prepare to serve in your kingdom throughout their youth years and also their adult years. Thank you, Father, for their parents who encourage them. Thank you, Father, for those who work with them. Father, please be with us. Help us to all be examples to them of what a child of God should be. Help us, Father, as we share our hope and our dreams as a child of God to be living with you eternity. And Father, please give us the discernment and the strength to make right decisions so that we do not become a stumbling block to any of these young people. Through Christ we pray, amen.